Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Joseph Castillo from All Nations International Fellowship. Thank you for joining us today. We're here in Israel at the Mount of Tabor. Now, this is the mount that Jesus took uh, Peter, James, and John with him to uh, pray. And on this mountain, uh, Jesus was transfigured in front of his disciples. And let me just read this account to you, and then I'm going to share with you a little bit about the situation. Here in Matthew chapter 17, starting with verse 1, it says, After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. As we know, James in the Bible actually is the English name given to, uh, given to Jacob. His name actually was Jacob or Jacob. And it says that they were led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. So when Jesus brought them up to a high mountain, he was transfigured in front of their face. This word transfigured is the word metamorphosis or metamorpho in the Greek. And this word is only found in the Greek three times. The first time we see this word transfigured is used is in two accounts recorded in Matthew and in once in Mark about when Jesus was up here on this mountain and he was transfigured. He was metamorphosized. He became something new. The word metamorphosis means to become something totally new. We understand that a, 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 a worm uh, goes into a cocoon and he is metamorphosized. He becomes something totally and completely different. The New Testament says it like this, for we yet not know what we shall become or what we we shall be but when he is revealed we will become and we will be known by all of what we shall be there's a metamorphosis that we all have a calling to and here Jesus was metamorphosized right in front of them if you recall the, when Moses was in Mount Sinai he also was metamorphosized to the point the Bible says that he's shown. The word in the Hebrew shown actually means to say he had like horns to come upon him, horns to grow upon him. And the Bible says they had to veil his face. Imagine if I came out of my prayer room and I had horns coming out of my head and I was shining like the, like the noonday sun, like it is shining today. It was a total metamorphosis, a completely new being. That which is everything that he is, that you are on the inside coming out. Now this word metamorphosis is only used two more times in New Testament. And the one time is in uh, is, is, is saying, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be metamorphosized by the renewing of your mind. So a second way to experience metamorphosis, besides the way Jesus did it in divine encounter, the second way to experience metamorphosis is through the Word of God, through meditating in the Word of God. Interesting enough, you'll never find anywhere in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, that tells you to read the Bible. But it tells you to study to show thyself approved unto God. Joshua chapter 1 says meditate in the word day and night. All throughout the book of Psalms we see the word selah. Selah, selah means pause, think, meditate, gurgitate on this, a chew on this. So by renewing our mind in the word of God, by taking the word and renewing our mind, there was levels of metamorphosis going from glory to glory. And the third time that metamorphosis is used in the New Testament, it is it says that we, like looking in a mirror, behold the Son of God, whereby we are metamorphosized from glory to glory. So we go through a metamorphical change by beholding the Son of God face to face in times of intimacy and divine encounter and prayer. So two ways that you can, and that's the way that Jesus did during his time of prayer, he was metamorphosized by the Spirit of God. And there it says when he was metamorphosized or changed before them, it says that his face shone like the sun. Oftentimes when you come out of a deep prayer, you'll have a glow, you'll have a shine. The, the old artists used to paint pictures of Jesus and Mary and the saints with kind of a halo around them or a glow upon them. That was, they were trying to depict through art the shine that comes upon our face when the Shekinah glory of God comes upon us. So it says here that his face shone like the sun. And when you have that kind of experience where the Spirit of God is shining off of your face, uh, people will notice you. People will see there's something different about you. People will be attracted to you. Uh, people who are demon-possessed will get angry and, and maybe treat, you know, talk about you or walk out of the room or, you know, or get offended when the Spirit of God is shining upon your face. It, it aggravates demons and it, and it draws those who are hungry for God because the Bible says that the deep call to the deep. And when the Spirit of God is manifesting and shining upon your face, those who are in need of God and desperate will come to encounter you. Amen.
So it says his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as the light. Jesus just then, it says, just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. So the next thing that happens after he's metamorphosized is Moses and Elijah appear to him. Isn't that interesting? Moses, we understand, was in Abraham's bosom. And we understand that Elijah was taken up to heaven in a chariot. Elijah and Enoch were two people that we know, maybe not the only two, but two people that we know in the Bible that didn't see death. They were taken up to heaven before they died. There might have been more, we don't know, but for sure the Bible records Enoch and Elijah. So we have someone who came directly from heaven, right to this mountain, face to face to talk to Jesus. And then we see somebody who came from Abraham's bosom, so one came from up, one came from above, and then we have Jesus, the Son of God, who was here on the earth realm. So we have the Abraham's bosom realm, the, the netherworld realm, then we have the heavenly realm, and we have the earthly realm. We have a meeting of three realms that come together and converged in this place. This here, Mount Tabor, is a convergence place of three realms that came together. Moses representing the law, Jesus representing the new covenant and Elijah representing also the rapture as well when we were taken up with him. Amen. In like manner, we will be taken up like Elijah, like Enoch. So it says here that Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. And while he was speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them. We know that the cloud of God is the glory of God. Whenever you see the cloud, when I was first got saved, the cloud used to always appear when I was praying or when me and my friends would get together and pray. There would be a cloud that appeared. When we had apostle Edgar Bailey, who was the apostle of faith and love, uh, the, the late apostle, uh, when he came to our church there in Beijing, we had about 800 people a night. They, they thought it was Billy Graham because his name is Edgar Bailey. So the Koreans were saying Bailey, Bailey, Bailey. They thought it was Bailey Graham. So anyways, uh, many people came. We had about 800 people a night. And there was a glory cloud that filled the entire sanctuary. It sat about 800 people. Every night, the glory cloud filled the whole sanctuary. You can barely see it was such a thick cloud in there. I have pictures of it. It looked like a, a deep fog or mist inside the building of this glory cloud. What the cloud is, is it's the manifested presence of God. It's the Shekinah. Shekinah means the manifested presence of God, which is manifested which is the Holy Spirit. So the Shekinah of God is the glory of God, which is the Holy Spirit, and it's in manifestation, in the manifest presence of God. But when We can say that God is everywhere, but God is not everywhere manifested. We can say God is in India, He's in Japan, He's everywhere at the same time, He's in your house, He's in the prison cell. But when the manifestation comes, it's the Shekinah or the glory that comes, and the manifested presence of God is where miracles begin to happen, as where prayers are begin to get answered, in the manifest presence of God. So if we see here, it goes on to say that the Shekinah glory cloud came and enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, so something always comes out of the cloud. Here we see a voice coming out of the cloud. And Answer prayers come out of the cloud. Angels come out of the cloud. Gold dust, gemstones, healings, uh, deliverances come out of the clouds. Whenever the cloud is there, you, you need to make a withdrawal because the manifest presence of God comes to, to, to deliver, to, to deliver something. So it says, out of the cloud came a voice, and the voice said, This is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him, it says. When the disciples heard this, they fell down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Get up, don't be afraid. And when they looked, they saw no one but Jesus. For Elijah had went back to heaven, Moses, and went back to, uh, to the bosom. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them and said, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? And Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah does come first and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. 
So he was prophesying to them what he was going to suffer, just like John the Baptist. Then the disciples understood that Jesus was talking to them about John the Baptist. So we understand that John the Baptist, Jesus said, was Elijah. Or we can say he came in the spirit of Elijah or in the mantle of Elijah. We don't believe in reincarnation, but we do believe that John the Baptist came in the mantle and the spirit of Elijah. Sometimes when you meet somebody and they remind you of somebody else, they might have a similar mantle or a similar spirit. That's why you say, oh, you remind me just like this other person. Uh, when you're dealing with uh, unclean spirits, for example, you were once married to this person who was, you know, very crazy. And then, you know, you're single and you're serving the Lord and you meet someone and they remind you of them. Well, they're remi you're reminded of their spirit, their familiar spirit. So in the same way there could be a familiar spirit, there also could be a familiar mantle. Where there's a mantle upon John the Baptist that was on Elijah, it's a similar mantle. And, G and John the Baptist came in that mantle of Elisha to restore all things to make way the son of God Jesus Christ so we are here in the Mount of Transfiguration, a very special place. And I want to encourage you that you should seek personal transformation. You can seek personal transformation through meditating on the Word of God. Don't just meditate on, you know, you know, just don't just take a dart out and throw it at your Bible and pick any verse to meditate on. But take the areas of your life where you need to be transformed to the image of God. You take those verses and you meditate on that and you will be transformed by the Word of God. Through the renewing of your mind, you'll be metamorphosized into the character and likeness of Christ and also spending time soaking in the presence of God through divine encounter, you can also be transformed by the Spirit of God. So seek that, that the glory will shine upon your face, but that also the character of God will shine through your life through transformation through the Word and transformation through divine encounter. God bless you from Mount Tabor, the Mount of Transfiguration. Thank you for watching Living Proof. Stay tuned for more episodes with Joseph Castillo.